Good morning and thank you for joining us today. My name is Felicia Baroud. I'm the lay leader here at First United Methodist Church and we are delighted that you chose to spend this next few minutes with us worshiping and praising God. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day. Please join us in singing One Pair of Hands and Jesus. Welcome to First United Methodist Church in Fairbanks, Alaska. We're grateful to be able to live and worship on these, the lands of the Denina people, 
whose descendants still live here today. These are the announcements for the fourth Sunday of Lent, March 14th, 2021. Today we continue a sermon series together looking at going from our life script to living, an invitation to let the Lord rewrite who we are. Today we look at what is already given to us through Jesus Christ. And this church is a pr- church of people who pray either together or apart, confident that our prayers are always heard. So let us pray, Holy God, your grace is a mystery that is incomprehensible to us. It draws us to you, inviting us into your presence. It allows us to experience your delight in us and helps us to trust your love, which we do not deserve, which we could not earn, but it's only by your grace, the continuing work of your love in our lives that we find eternal life with you. We thank you for this vast mystery. We thank you for grace that amazes, convicts, invites, and consoles. May our lives be a grateful response to your extravagant gift, O Lord, as we come to you with the words that Jesus taught us to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
join me in reading a statement of faith at the United Church of Canada. This is number 883 from the United Methodist Hymnal. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you are a refiner's fire. You are the thunder on the mountain. You are the potter with the clay. You are the pillar of cloud in the wilderness and the burning bush in the desert. Lead us to leave ourselves behind and to come relish what you offer so freely, your greatest gift to us. Amen. Now let us listen to a word from the Lord as I read from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature the children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespass, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I am a
restaurants where there's no prices on the menu, usually very high dollar places where the food may be very elaborate. And the idea, it's said, to, to help to increase the perceived value of the items. When there's no price listed, the assumption is it's extremely valuable. Or, in some places, if you have to ask what the price is, you probably can't afford it. Others might be seeking some kind of luxury escape and going off maybe once in a blue moon to a high-end restaurant to enjoy something luxurious and decadent and prices doesn't matter because it's only one evening. Another practice used to be to have two menus. One was called the host menu. And that was usually the person paying for the bill. And then there was the guest menu the one who was being hosted. It also, in the olden days, used to be referred to as the ladies' menu because it was always presumed that the, the man would be paying. Well, this past Sunday, these past Sundays of Lent, we've been talking more about scripts than menus. Adam and Eve, the first parents, their temptation, they're, they're turning on one another, Adam blaming Eve, Eve blaming the serpent, giving us the first drama, the first script. We've heard from Paul, of a God who is ready to give generously, even while we were yet sinners, even while we were tied to that old script. We hear of one that's ready to, to help us write a new one. This is why when we come upon the reading from Ephesians, many tend to get skeptical and think, well, when do we get the bill? How much did that, did that meal at the Lord's table last Sunday cost us? It seems too good to be true. Your sins are forgiven. We're renewed and restored. We who were dead are re receiving new life. This sounds like too much like mercy, too much like grace. And there's the frosting on the salvation cake. All of this comes to us for free. But bear in mind, it did cost dearly. There's nothing we need to do. There's no hoops we can jump through. There's... No hidden cost. Jesus, the host, is picking up the bill. And it sounds too good to be true. There are some fabulous places out there to eat. Itha Undersea is one of the world's first underwater restaurants. It's located in the Maldives. To dine in this restaurant, you're looking at approximately $300 per person before drinks and taxes and tips. But you'll be enjoying food five meters below the ocean. There's the Guy Savoy, which has two restaurants, one in it in Vegas and the other in Paris, France. The restaurant offers a 13-course tasting me menu, which will run you about $626. Focused heavily on meats like marinated duck, festival of lobster, and barbecued pigeon. And there's the Masatakiyama in New York, which will cost you approximately $590 per head, excluding drinks and taxes. The restaurant is known for its simplicity, offering a simple su sushi tasting menu focused on the essential flavors. Now just remember, sushi is basically raw fish. These meals, these settings, 
These wonderful experiences, however, will come to an end. They don't satisfy forever. Today's passage from Ephesians reminds us, reminds us of just how difficult life can be. You were dead, Paul writes. You were dead to Ephesus and to us through your sins. You've been disobedient to the ways of God. You followed your own desires. And where did it get you? Paul asks. The same place that leads everyone else. Nowhere. Paul then goes on to point out all the places where the church of Ephesus has tried to find a better way on their own. They've lived in the passions of their flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and found these empty. You know what that's like? We too have sometimes chased after money, position, power, and find that when we acquire them, they're not what we thought. We're not satisfied. We shop for vacation deals. We think we'll bring satisfaction. We, we go out to eat, to experience new things. And they never really make us happy. Paul summarizes our script like this. We were dead in our sins, but God. We were in rebellion, but God. We were enslaved to our nature, but God. We kept reading from the old script, repeating the lines of Adam and Eve, but God. But God intervened and intervenes. Paul offers the solution to us as well. There's a new life that will deeply satisfy, and it's available to us. We were once dead, but we can be made truly alive. We were once struggling, but there's one ready to save us. We had once been poor, but there are better richer, riches available to us. Well, what's this going to cost? The biblical answer, of course, is nothing. The price has already been paid. The work has already been done. God has completed this work in Jesus Christ and that perfect obedience of Christ. Perfect obedience when he headed to Jerusalem, praying rather than fleeing. That perfect obedience when he didn't even raise his voice to save himself. That perfect obedience of letting himself be crucified. It wasn't free, but the host had the only menu with the prices in it. And he pays the bill. Paul writes instead, God is doing all this out of the great love with which he loved us. This is a gift. And God's love changes everything. We still want to see the fine print. And all we see in Ephesians is God's love. And the bad news is we can't buy in. There's nothing to buy. We cannot earn it. We cannot give something in exchange for it. We don't deserve it because of something we've done. All of it given to us by the grace of our Lord and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Notice the passage is always in the present tense. God made us alive. You have been saved. God has raised us up. Raised us up. All of this already accomplished in Christ. Our task is to do is not to do something to earn it, this amazing new life, but to rather live into it. This more satisfying life already being given to learn that new script that's ready, that's ready, not to just memorize it like we were in a high school play, but to let it grow on us. Paul concludes, for we for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be the way of life. God is calling us to a new way of living. God is not asking us to earn something, but to rather to receive something already given and to become something that God has in mind. There is a better way and you don't have to purchase it. In fact, it's not for sale. It's a gift already given. Live into it. May we accept this gift, this gift of love by living into the life of faith which is already ours, this new script already ready for us, a, a new future, a new way of being, a new way of living fully. 
We hope you've been enjoying our online worship services, and we thank you for your generous support. And being part of our ministry here just below the Arctic Circle, you're not only supporting preaching and praise and great music, but you're also supporting a, a caring presence in, in one of Methodism's most northern locations where we are still carrying out ministries of feeding and housing and equipping and others, as well as being a voice of mercy and justice. We welcome your gifts. And please contact the office if you want to know more of how you can be part of the mission and ministry here. The number is 907-452-2956. Or send contributions to FUMC, 915 2nd Avenue, Fairbanks, Alaska, 99701. And now... Wonder-working God, use all of who we are and all of what we have to uproot what is un unjust and to plant what is loving. Let us join in your mission, O God, through our gifts of time and talent, energy and treasure. Th though our gifts may be meek, you multiply what we bring to speak your gospel to people that we may never meet. May all come to hear your call to faithfulness of life. Amen. and singing Cornerstone. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the same Just 
faultless alone, faultless I stand before the throne, faultless I stand before the You're not the same people you were. Grow from who you are to who God calls you to be. A new story is becoming yours, and once and once broken has been made new. You have been set apart as God's own. Grow, grow in the knowledge that you have been made whole, holy, and beautiful. Amen. Mm-hmm. 